The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. Favor determines the limits of everyone's destiny. Favor is like faith. It demands that God be your source and your only source. You can wear favor. People can see it on you. One encounter with favor was worth a lifetime of labor. With favor, you're gonna get confidence. With favor, all you got to do is know God. Now, I want you to get that, saints, because that is one of the biggest differences between the world and the church. I said, God will open up your door. That door can be locked and sealed for years, but when you stand in front of it, it will open up. The favor of God is so powerful until no harassment, no weapon, no nothing, because God has endorsed you. You're going into a place now where God's about to raise you up, but I don't want you to compromise going up the mountain. Come on, I don't want you to bow to Baal. I want you to maintain your stand. And the way you're gonna do that is through favor. One day of favor, one encounter, is worth a lifetime of labor. I said one encounter with favor is worth more than any bank account you ever thought you had. One encounter with favor. Notice it didn't take long, glory to God. So he had Egypt to pay in one day for Israel's 430 years of slavery. Say amen to that. So I'm here to tell you that same favor is on your life. Now, one more time, let's go over to Psalms, Psalm chapter 30, if you will, and verse 5. For his anger endureth but for a moment. In favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night. Come on. But joy cometh in the morning. Now, I know we've said that traditionally at funerals, but he was talking about favor. <laughs> now, let me show you how that plays out in somebody's life named Joseph. In Genesis 39, this is where Joseph was working for a man named Potiphar. He was sold to him as a slave. Potiphar took him, but favor was on Joseph. In fact, let's prove that by verse 6. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not aught he had save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was goodly, a goodly person, and what? Well favored. Now, it's amazing about favor because favor will give you assistance in whatever you're doing. So let's say you're working for a certain company, favor will come in and favor you. Favor will bring you to prominence in that company. And it's amazing about people, if you solve their problems, they're going to promote you. If I go on down here, here comes Mrs. Potiphar. You know the story. And she tries to get him to lie with her. He said, wait a minute, how can I sin against my God? Verse 9. So he goes on down and they falsely accuse him and throw him in prison. But look what it said in verse 24. But the Lord was with Joseph and he showed him mercy and gave him what? Favor, Favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did, there he was a doer of it. And the keeper of the prison looked not on anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him. 
And that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. Say, the Lord made it to prosper. prosper. It's interesting about how favor works. Um, You, sometimes what happens with people is they're trying to do it in their own strength. And favor is like faith. It demands that God be your source and your only source. So now he gets put in prison. And there are two people that come down and join him after a short while. And that's the chief butler and also the chief baker. Somehow they offended the king, probably cooked something that didn't taste quite right. And he put him in prison. Now they're down in prison. And like I said, Joseph asked them a question. He said in verse seven, why are you looking so sad today? And how many of you know misery loves company? So one of the things about favor is you've got to keep your attitude right. You see, again, faith is positive. Say faith is positive. You, you will find people who are very negative are not in faith because you can't be in faith. Faith sees the invisible. Faith sees something and realizes something that hasn't really manifested yet. So faith is positive. Say faith is positive. So here he is down here. And so the chief butler and the baker have a dream. So he interprets dreams. He interprets the chief butler's dream. He said, what you dream is the fact that blah, 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 and you're going to be restored in three days back to your old job. And he says this to him in verse 14. But think on me when it shall be well with thee and show kindness, I pray thee, unto me and make mention of me unto Pharaoh and bring me out of this house. It doesn't say out of this house in the message translation. It says out of this pit. So he didn't have any color TVs down there in some kind of relaxing couch. He was down there and it was rough. But weeping lasts only for a night. Come on now. Now, in this, it's key that you see Joseph wanted to get out. So Joseph is saying, see if Pharaoh, see if they got any more jobs in the, in, the, in the palace. You know, I got some skills. Seeking to use a good worker up there. If you will, go see, you know, in the world is who you know. Who you know down at the plant. Come on, who you know down at the school board. Come on now. Who you know in the mayor's office. How, who you know in the White House. Who you know. But with favor, you don't have to know but one person. With favor, all you got to do is know God. Now, I want you to get that, saints, because that is one of the biggest differences between the world and the church. I said, God will open up your door. That door can be locked and sealed for years, but when you stand in front of it, it will open up. Say amen to that. So, of course, he wanted to get out and trying to get this man to speak a word for him. But how I many of you know he went back up there and forgot all about it? Let's go over one more thing that I had down here. Sometimes, in terms of this whole idea of favor, we feel insecure. And when I say feel insecure, I mean this. People feel insecure. Maybe they don't speak quite as well as other people speak, or maybe if you feel insecure about the position that they have and, and call in to talk to somebody in a high position, they feel insecure about it. Or maybe um, it is a, um, the idea about a person feeling their background. Their background is not quite where somebody else's is. In other words, um, they didn't make as much money as this guy's got all this just millions of dollars here, and, and they feel a little bit, a little bit uh, inferior, if you will, in, in their thinking. Or maybe it's a racial background. I know 
different places that I went. Uh, when I finished college, I was flying in the military and I flew fighters. And there usually, praise God, usually was no uh, people flying fighters of color, uh, but BW and, uh, you know, and, and so forth. And I, 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 you know, I got top gun. I didn't let that hold me back. But my, my point to you is, is that uh, sometimes people have a little, a racial thing. Maybe you came from another country, a Spanish speaking country, and you're, you, you, you got some accent or your English is not as good as other people and so forth and so on. Or maybe you might feel that you're not as attractive as somebody else, or maybe a little overweight. Uh, well, let, me, let me take that off. And, and maybe, <clears throat> but anyway, not good enough. My point to you is, is that's where favor can kick in for you. Come on, that's where favor, cause even though your English may not be where you want it to be, favor will open the door. Come on. If, if you look at even Rachel's life, you'll see that Rachel had favor. And, and, and Jacob saw that woman and said, Lord have mercy. I'm telling you women, all you need is favor on your life and you can be out there, but favor will bring you in to a relationship. Come on, come on now. See, what you're doing is you trying to do it in your own strength. And when you do that, God takes his hands off and he lets you go for yourself. But if you go up and acknowledge who he is, see, every time you acknowledge who he is, your favor increases. And a lot of times we don't want to say who he is because we think it might embarrass us. Here, let me tell you something. David was not embarrassed. He even took his clothes off and danced. Say amen to that. I'm here to tell you right now, God's people need to start speaking up and letting other folk know that Jesus is Lord. So, God is a God of favor. The nature of God is to show favor. He wants you to ask him, do me a favor. That's his nature. He loves you. He's out to promote you. Come on now. See, his word is out to Abraham and he's got to do it for Abraham and his seed. You are the seed of Abraham. Say amen to that. So what am I telling you? I'm telling you that your destiny is defined by favor. That with this favor, it will determine how far you can go. It determined it in David's life. It determined it over here in uh, Joseph's life. As you remember, Joseph was uh, then the king had a problem that he needed to solve and he called on this man, Joseph. And um, so Joseph came and Joseph began to uh, tell the king, uh, you know, what to do and so forth. And uh, the king then began to do it. And the next thing you know, the king made uh, Joseph second in command. And I'm telling you right now, it didn't take the king but one hour to make this man vice over the whole country. I'm saying if you've got favor in your life, you can do some marvelous and miraculous things. Say amen to that. Now, the other thing about it is you need to expect favor. I said you need to expect favor. Once you pray favor or speak favor in the morning, you need to expect favor all day long. I said, you need to expect favor all day long. Look what he says over in Job chapter 22 and verse 28, please. Thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon thy ways. It's time for you to decree favor. God desires to do favor for me and you 
and do them in abundance. Glory to God. And that applies to all of Abraham's seed and you are Abraham's seed. Say amen to that. Now you've been called to solve problems. So don't think when God puts you in a place where you've got problems that you've got a problem. One of the things about problems is that we've got to get the right attitude about a problem. You've been called for problems. Say amen to that. A problem is not to make you anxious. A problem is to promote you because no problems, no profit. Now let's look at him choosing you because sometimes because maybe you have some of these little things that may not be quite where you want them. You think maybe I'm not that attractive. I'm not this, that. No, 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 no. Don't try to count yourself out. God chose you. You didn't choose him. Say amen. amen. He chose you. Now let's go over here, if you will, the first Samuel chapter 16. Say the favor of God, favor of God is, on is on my life and is surrounding me like a shield. And, me like a shield. and, I, thank and I thank you for great favor. For great favor. I am highly favored. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. All right, look what it says in 1 Samuel chapter 16. I'll start reading at verse 6. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. He's saying, and I put another translation here. He says, have no regard for his appearance or his stature. Have no regard for it. Do you understand that David was a guy about my size? I know that doesn't mean much to you, <laughs> but it means a lot to me. <laughs> Say amen here. Amen. Now this is different from Saul because if you go over to 1 Samuel chapter 8, this is when God first chose a king for Israel. And look at verse chapter 8. And look at verse 19. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. And they said, nay, but we will have a king over us that we also may be like the nations, in other words, the world, and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. Come on down to chapter 9 and verse 2. And he had a son, talking about this, the, the parents of Saul, King Saul, whose name was Saul, a choice young man and a goodly. And there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. From his shoulder and upward, he was higher than any of the people. He wasn't God's choice. He was the people's choice. The people's choice. See, if you let people choose them, they're going to get, you know, six, five. Come on, can I come? Wait, maybe I better go over here. I'm here to tell you that people judge from the outside. But God looks, come on, at the heart. And I'm saying when you're trying to disqualify yourself, be careful because God chose you. And when he did, he looked at your heart. Say amen to that. He, he didn't choose Saul. That was a people's choice. That little old joint I used to go to and I was going to say called a people's choice. <laughs> boy, there's a lot of flesh up in there, boy. That, that flesh was running crazy up in there. 
But my point to you is, are y'all following me? Y'all over here, y'all see what I'm saying? I'm saying you got to let God choose for you. Because sometimes you're choosing something for the short run. Because what happened to this man Saul? All of a sudden, he stopped following the Lord. And the next thing you know, God took an anointing off of him, found this one guitar player. Come on, coming in from keeping sheep. Came in, didn't have protocol one. Hey, Samuel, what, what, what's up, bro? What's up? <laughs> Yeah, what would what, what, what it be like? Now, he didn't have no protocol, but God looks on the heart. He knows exactly what he's doing. Say amen to this. So what happened? Saul ended up, the anointing left him, envious of David trying to kill him. But when you have favor, you are divinely positioned. And whenever you are divinely positioned, nothing can hurt you. Alabahasa. So not only can you pray favor on you, but favor on your family. Say amen now, because we're going to get protected from what happened this week. We're going to pray favor on them kids. Favor on your wife. Ha ha. Own your school. Don't let that stop. Say amen, somebody. So, Saul ended up going to some kind of Obi man or some woman who worked all this roots and stuff and just gone crazy. Eventually just killed himself. What am I saying? No favor. See, you got to let God do it. Keep your hands off of it. And it's all right if you say this, Lord, do me a favor. Lord, I need a favor, Lord. Because favor is his nature. This is not something, you're not asking him to do anything outside of what he's already promised Abraham he's going to do for you. Say amen. amen. But it's your way to the top. Look what it did for Joseph. It took him from a slave to a ruler over a country. So I'm saying what he did for him, what he did for Abraham, what he did for Apostle Paul, what he did for Jesus, he's now ready. It's a set time for him to do it for you. Give the Lord a praise because it's your time for favor. Well, I trust that you were blessed by that powerful teaching. It's the law of favor. Now, today's teaching is part of an exciting three-disc series. Now, here's a very important point you want to remember. The Lord made Joseph to prosper, and he was raised up to be number two in command to Pharaoh. Now, this is a Jew raised up in Egypt. (laughs) So, in the world, it's who you know, but not so in the kingdom. (laughs) In the kingdom, favor will take you to the top. Praise God. Our announcer is going to give you some important information on how you can order this powerful teaching on the law of favor, and I'll be right back. Favor determines the limits of everyone's destiny. Favor is like faith. It demands that God be your source and your only source. You can wear favor. People can see it on you. One encounter with favor was worth a lifetime of labor. With favor, you're going to get confidence. With favor, all you got to do is know God. Now, I want you to get that, saints, because that is one of the biggest differences between the world and the church. I said, God will open up your door. That door can be locked and sealed for years, but when you stand in front of it, it will open up. The favor of God is so powerful. Until no harassment, no weapon, no nothing, because God has endorsed you. 
going into a place now where God's about to raise you up. But I don't want you to compromise going up the mountain. Come on, I don't want you to bow to Baal. I want you to maintain your stand. And the way you're going to do that is through favor. Understand God's favor, expect his favor, and wear divine favor on your life in Pastor Winston's dynamic teaching entitled, The Law of Favor. To order on CD or MP3, DVD or MP4, contact us online at billwinston.org. You can also reach us at 1-800-711-9327. Walk into your destiny and rise to the top when you experience favor, positioning you well beyond the limits of your past in The Law of Favor. Order The Law of Favor today. Hello, Bill Winston here. I'm inviting you to our annual Faith Refresher. Now, this year it's called Faith for the Impossible. Now, that's where we are. I'm telling you, God's going to give you an impossible dream and you're going to need faith to bring it to pass. Praise God. Come on out and get some. That's February the 23rd through the 25th. Uh, You can join us in person or online. It's going to be terrific. We're talking about a faith boost. (laughs) Hallelujah. We got to boost your faith for this hour because a lot of things are happening now and you need faith to overcome the things that are in the world. So come on out, join us again. That's going to be Faith Refresher, February the 23rd through the 25th. And our theme this year is Faith for the Impossible. You cannot afford to miss this conference. Come on out, join us. We love you and keep walking by faith. Doctors Bill and Veronica Winston are dedicated to seeing lives changed through the power of prayer. Our loving and highly trained prayer ministers are ready to pray and agree with you. We know that prayer can turn around any situation in your life. Contact us by phone at 1-877-543-9443 or submit your prayer request online at billwinston.org forward slash prayer. Follow us on Facebook to join us for our regular live prayer sessions. We want to thank our partners who have made this prayer call center possible. Together, we are transforming lives throughout the world. If you are not a partner, we encourage you to pray about joining us in partnership and be a part of the wonderful work that God is doing through this ministry. We love you and look forward to praying and partnering with you. The mission of Bill Winston Ministries is to preach the gospel of the kingdom throughout the world. This broadcast has been made available to you through the faithful support of Bill Winston Ministry partners and friends. We invite you to become a partner and join Dr. Bill Winston as he trains believers how to live independent of this world system and have dominion over it. Thank you, Bill Winston Ministry partners and viewers for your continuous support of the Believer's Walk of Faith broadcast. The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. Now remember, you need faith to get to your destiny. So don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our videos. This is Bill Winston. I love you and keep walking by faith.